Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of the Lunar Orbit podcast, where I provide timely updates and fresh thoughts on the Terra Luna ecosystem. My name is Jerry, today is Tuesday the 8th of March 2022. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Prism Farm, the launch of Mars, and a massive lunar burn. So the Mars Protocol has just launched, it's finally gone live, and as I predicted in the last podcast, there was a big dump of the price, unfortunately. And that's created quite a bit of FUD. This uh, Twitter thread here from Red Phone Crypto goes into some of the details of it. Basically, people couldn't uh, claim their airdrop and their initial amount of token that they would receive from the lock drop for a few hours. And in those few hours, people managed to interact with the smart contract directly and dump a lot of tokens, which honestly I was completely expecting. This is pretty standard stuff in crypto. Even if the UI was working, you know, straight away, there's a really good chance that the bots would get in there and front run you and probably dump on us. So normally there's often there's a big spike in the first few seconds of a token as a bot comes in and buys it all up and then retail FOMOs in in the seconds after and buys the new token and then the, the person that's running the bot dumps the token on everybody's heads. But because this already had sort of a, a basically a price built into it with the way the lock drop worked, it pretty well just dumped straight away. Um, if you have a quick look at the chart, you can see some some unfortunate bot did get in here and buy all the way up to about $16 and then the token crashed down to about 60 cents. We move this forward slightly. This is a bit more realistic because the uh, the price at the end of phase two of the lock drop was $1.67, so about here. And this is realistically where all the action happened. Those first few candles were with not much liquidity at all. So it pretty well dumped about 65% straight away, but it's stabilized and is now slowly climbing, which is quite bullish. For the protocol, I decided to hold on to mine and just stake them. And it's good to see that it's slowly recovering. So a lot of people were quite upset about this. But to be honest, if you're upset about this, it basically meant that you were also trying to just dump the token, which is not in the interests of the protocol long term either. If we have a quick look at some other recent launches on Luna, the charts are very similar. So here's the Luart one. In the first few moments, it, it pumped up to almost a dollar and now it's trading at eight cents. Again, if we have a look at Lunaverse, it's got a ridiculous candle when it first opened, went up to $26 and is now trading at six cents. So this is not uncommon really. And the fact that it's, yes, the token has halved in the first few hours here with Mars, but it's slowly reaching a floor and it's, it's building again. So that's quite cool and good to see. So they haven't actually launched a whole lot yet with Mars. There's just a few, few assets you can deposit and borrow, just Luna and UST but they're going to be uh, rolling stuff out over the next week and uh, it'll get interesting from there. You can now stake your Mars token, but there's no APRs yet to determine how much sort of value it's accruing. It's going to take a few days to sort of gather some momentum and some volume, it would seem. So yeah, Mars is finally here, guys. That's been a significant protocol we've been waiting on and a lot of other protocols are planning to use it. So things like Levana will probably start to see spinning up in the next sort of four to six weeks and uh, it feels like it's almost like this is the, the true start of the, the TFI explosion. Um, at the same time that this was happening, the, uh, the, the PRISM token or the PRISM farm went live, which meant you could start farming the PRISM token using Y Luna, which I mentioned in the last podcast. So it's now live uh, and it's some pretty crazy yields you can get just by staking your Y Luna. So the, the X PRISM governance token in itself accrues a lot of value. So it's currently earning about 45% interest per year, which is an excellent return when you think about it, um, given that this is still the very early days of the protocol. It's already generating quite a good yield. So this yield is actually generated through you know, the revenues of the protocol. It's not just token issuance. The way uh, that the X models work usually is that people will stake their token to make it you know, X whatever, X sushi, in this case X prism. And then the protocol will redistribute the fees, buy up the native token and redeposit it into the same pool, which basically redistributes that token back to everyone as revenue, as your interest, almost like a quasi-dividend. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good model because it simplifies a lot of people's tax situations where this uh, token just grows in value over time 
and there's not a taxable event each and every time that, you know, generates a bit of value um, and you're not going in there and claiming it yourself. It's just auto compounding, which is great. So the X, the X Prism token in itself has great value capture already, but where it re gets really interesting is when you start farming it. So let's bring up the site here. If you come into Govan, I think it is. That's where you can stake your prism for X Prism. That's the current yield. And then stake. You could stake in here, but I wouldn't recommend that now. That this is live, the prism farm. So this this lasts one year, and I think it's 13% of the total supply, something like that, is available for farmers. So once once that's gone away, then you would come and stake over here and just get extra yield in uh, the protocol revenue, but just paid out in P and Y lender. But this is paid out in Prism, which is why it's a much higher APY because it's inflation of the token. It's uh, issuance of the token, uh, you know, initial distribution, if you like. So uh, it's really juicy. I've got a screenshot here of, of my uh, my own page because it shows you a little bit more detail. So they have these two pools. You've got a base APR and an AMPS APR. So we'll start with the base. So you're currently earning 56% or 57% on your Luna by staking Y Luna and it's paid out in PRISM tokens. You can see I've accrued quite a few PRISM tokens already just in the first 12 hours or so. And then you've got this AMPS section as well. So the way the AMPS work is you would come into the PRISM farm here and then you can activate an AMPS boost. So you would need to stake some X PRISM and then pledge it into the AMP vault. And then it starts accruing these AMP rewards which boosts your returns. So as you can see here, I'm getting 134% interest paid out in X Prism on staking my Y Luna. So that's a heck of a lot better than the 9% you'll get just by staking Luna. So I can see this is going to be super popular for probably, you know, several months to come, especially in the first year. And I'm really bullish on Prism. It's got excellent value capture mechanisms built into the tokenomics. And I'm so enthused about it. I'll probably do another feature video in the next few days because it's... um. It's a really excellent protocol, I think, and they've got some seriously big plans to grow, and I think it's just going to capture more and more value. So just to, to remind you, one of the elements of that, they've got these pools here. These all live on the PRISM site, so all this liquidity is actually on the PRISM site. This is part of their, their total value locked, and they generate fees from all the swaps here all day long, so that's partly why you've got such a high percent return in your PRISM token when you stake it into X PRISM. Also, it is quite confusing and quite complex. So your native Luna that you've got here, when it's deposited into their platform, into PRISM's platform, it's converted to C Luna. And it is uh, staked in the background to get proof of stake rewards. And then they issue you these two tokens when you split this C Luna, when you refract it. You get one P Luna and one Y Luna for every Luna token that you refract. Now the Y Luna represents the yield portion, so your nine percent interest that you would get from proof of stake rewards, and the P token represents the rest of the Luna token, which at the moment is essentially just governance. Now the the point I really wanted to make here is when they when you've got these uh, C Luna and Y Luna in these pools, they're not staked within the protocol anymore, like on the stake here. So all of the yield that comes out of this, 100% of the yield that comes out of these, these two here, gets returned back to the protocol. So if you start seeing Y Luna pools pop up and C Luna pools pop up on other platforms, all of that yield that's being generated is actually being redistributed back to the protocol itself. So that's, that's a serious, a revenue stream for the protocol over time, especially if they start refracting a whole bunch of other assets. They've already said that they'll be able to refract the LP positions, your liquidity liquidity positions within an ASHRAE port and split them up into principal and yield as well. So the more liquidity that flows into this, um, the more value that the PRISM token is going to capture and that's why I'm so bullish on it. Alrighty, so the last thing I wanted to talk about, guys, is this big burn that's happening of Luna yet again. Now, this tweet came out from Doe three days ago and it was a bit of a jaw drop moment for me. So Doe's saying plus 450. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So we dive into the tweet that he's referencing from the Lunar Foundation Guard. 
they've uh, specified that the UST is in such high demand that the protocol is maxing out how much it can mint. So there's some, you know, um, parameters within the algorithm that allow a certain amount to be minted every day. And we've been bumping into that upper limit day on day for some time now. So the only other place you can get UST is through the curve pool on Ethereum, main Ethereum. So that's wrapped UST. Let's have a quick look at the curve pool. This is it here. And as you can see, there's these collateral types in a pool. So the way Curve works is it's a pool of like-for-like -like assets. So in this case, they're all USD stable coins. So we've got three Curve, which represents USDT, so Tether, USDC, and DAI, matched against UST. Now, this is supposed to be even 50-50. And even since this tweet came out three days ago, this ratio has actually gotten worse. The demand is outstripping the, the actual supply of UST. So that's pretty darn bullish in its own right. But as you can see, there's only 40% of this pool is UST. It's supposed to be 50-50 or at least very close to that. And if it slips out, usually there's arbitrage. So the ingenious thing here with what the Luna Foundation Guard is going to do, looks like they're going to burn 5 uh, million Luna, um, basically minting four point, sorry, $450 million worth of UST as they did recently, a few weeks ago, they're doing it again. And then they're gonna be getting that UST and pumping it into this curve pool. Now, because there's less UST in this pool, they'll actually get positive slippage, which means they'll be buying up these other US stable coins at a discount. So if they put, you know, $1 in, they'll get, you know, maybe a dollar five back in one of these coins. And then once they've finished putting $450 million back into this pool, hopefully it balances things out a bit. But looking at that, it might not because the pool's, you know, it's pretty big. There's a lot of volume through here and there's a lot of liquidity in here and they're only putting $450 million in. So that, that would be interesting. But the really ingenious thing is they're buying all these other stable coins at a discount, which they're then going to sell for Bitcoin again, like they did with Redacted 3. So that's pretty staggering. And if you have a look at the Terra Analytics, you can, you know, you can see those metrics again. You can see the supply change. We're burning more and more lunar every day, and it's been very consistent over the last sort of 10 or 15 days. So we're just maxing out what we can mint every day. And that's that's pretty crazy. Um, what really uh, surprised me is this this quote from Doe, and it does, uh, you know, he does like to take the the Mickey a bit uh, on on Twitter with his tweets. So he's saying here the Terra Protocol, we're one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. Sailor Beware. So Sailor is the CEO of MicroStrategy. So if you don't know who they are, they're a software company. But about eighteen months or so ago, they started buying up Bitcoin in massive amounts. Most of it with publicly raised debt, which is actually quite ingenious when you consider how cheap money is these days, how cheap it is to borrow, and they've become the biggest bit. Bitcoin whale around. So we have a look at the Bitcoin Treasuries website here, bitcointreasuries.net. We can see that MicroStrategy by far hold the most Bitcoin out of any of the institutions. It's uh, This is dated back to their filing uh, in late November last year, so they have bought more since. But you can see they own an awful lot. Uh, you know, as of when this was last reflected, um, about you know, close to $5 billion in Bitcoin. And Terraform Labs would now slide into here at number three, just from the raise they did last the last few weeks. And if they keep raising over the next few weeks, they'll be at number two in no time. And they'll jump Tesla and their Bitcoin holdings. So that's pretty significant. Basically, UST is going to have an extra shock absorber. It's not just going to be um, the Luna token, it's going to be Bitcoin. So if there's a big panic in the market or there's a loss of faith in, in uh, UST and Luna, people will be able to um, basically mint back into Bitcoin. I believe that's how that works. So th this is all incredibly bullish. And basically Terraform Labs is, well, the Luna Foundation Guard is going to be, sounds, sounds like they're going to be dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. And uh, this is going to scale up with the size of UST. So the bigger that the UST market cap gets, the more Bitcoin they intend to buy to help backstop it all so super significant stuff guys um hard not to be bullish when all this is going on 
Luna's held up really well compared to the rest of the market. It, it has had a bit of a pullback and been dragged back with everything else, but I just think that's an amazing opportunity to buy the dip. So if you've got some funds, you know, not financial advice, but, you know, it does look like good value at the moment because more and more UST is getting minted and more and more Luna is being burned. Okay, guys, that's all I've got for today's show. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.